met before. I'm so pleased that you have joined us. This is Ethan. Hey guys. And we are no longer in Tom's garden. We changed location. We miss South Kensington far too much. And so, in front of us and behind you guys is the Royal Albert Hall. Um, we just missed the leadership <laughs> conference far too much. That was really nice, Ethan. Yeah, no, lovely. they can't even see <laughs> <laughs> So we decided to come here and film the live from this location. Um, so if you are new here, why don't you say hi in the chat? Let us know where you're watching from. Ethan, how are you doing? I'm doing great. And we also want to make sure that we stay connected with you guys. So stay connected. How about you guys share that link with everyone that you know, whether that's by WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, in any way you can to everyone that you can. Or if you fancy someone, I haven't tried this one out yet, so it might not work, so don't hold me accountable. Fancy someone, give them a cheeky DM with the link. Surely it's a <laughs> yeah. it's surefire way. 10 out of 10. So, so yeah, go let for that. Let us know if it works. <laughs> also let us know where you guys are watching from and like uh, like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, HTV Youth on YouTube, just so that you guys can stay in touch with everything that we're doing as a, as a youth group. And also, why don't you guys join a Zoom group? All the details about joining a Zoom group will be available to you guys after the service, so pay attention. I'm, I've always really wanted to do this and feel like a YouTuber, so I really hope that Aaron puts us in, otherwise it's going to look really weird. But if you want to subscribe to the channel, why don't you click here? You can just click right here. We're going, hi. <laughs> subscribe to our YouTube channel. <laughs> I carry on. Uh, we're now going to head to worship. Guys, that was the most awkward experience of my life. Guys, we have Tay. <laughs> we're now going to head to worship. We've got Tayana, Joe, Lucian leading us today. So why don't you find a position that's comfortable for you to stand up, lie down, sit, do whatever you like. And um, let's go. Let's see. Let's worship. In the darkness we were waiting Without hope, without light Till from heaven mercy in your eyes to fulfill the lore and prophets to a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt praise the
Tiana, Lucian, Joe, thank you so much for that beautiful worship. Um, now, last week, Ethan started something, and I'm gonna get my payback. So he made me drink a concoction. Concoction, is that a word? Yeah, we'll go with it. Um, of horrible things, and I, I downed it. I had like one sip left, I downed it all. So it's my turn to get payback. If you're wondering where Ethan is, he's behind the camera, he has a face mask over his eyes and he's dancing to music, so he can't hear anything. This is the game. I am go I've got three drinks here, and um, basically I am going to live on air. Um, each drink has got some things in it, Ethan has to have a spoonful of it, tell me the three ingredients. If he gets them right, he wins Oreos. If he gets them wrong, he has to have a spoonful of everything combined. So, I'm gonna make them for you. The first ingredients. Oh, hello, son. Hula hoops. Hula hoops? What's that? Spaghetti hoops. Okay, also, I haven't had these in so long. These are real life. Nothing fake about that. Um, I'm gonna put some in here. No dollar. Also, for all of you eco-warriors, I will take all the food home and I will eat it. So don't you worry. Ginger shot, because he is a he is a health nut. And you can't go wrong with a bit of ginger. And big up, Michael Smith, Dr. Pepper. Oh. Guys, that looks delicious. Next drink, I've got. A little bit of barbecue sauce. Should have thought about this, this before. Um, barbecue sauce and popcorn. I thought he was looking for the last one. I went for this popcorn because I know he likes his health and it only says it's 87 calories per pack. So I thought he'd appreciate that. But just to make it harder, I'm gonna like scrunch it up. I have washed my hands at least once today, so we're fine. And then I'm thinking, I'm gonna put a bit of ginger in this one. Guys, I feel like that fizzed. Is that? I'm not sure if that's meant to happen, but it fizzed. Um, I feel like Delia Smith doing like her own cooking show. Next one, coconut water. Who actually likes coconut water? If you say you do, you're lying. That has got mud in it. So we're gonna use the same cup. We're just gonna empty it out. And then I've got some soy sauce because you made me drink soy sauce last week. And so it's only fair to make that. Never have too much. That's a lot you can. And hula hoops! Oh no. He's gonna be blindfolded, so I don't need to. I don't need to hide it. Okay, give it all a mix. Okay, I'm it feels just... I'm not gonna feed you because that feels weird. Wait, can someone take my phone? Please? Um, I'll take your phone for you. There you go. Um, so this is the game, Ethan. Okay. This drink has three things in it, and there's three of the drinks, and you have to have a, a spoonful slash fork because you know. I have a spoon when you can have a spork. Um, and you have to tell me which three things are in it, okay? There's three. There's three ingredients one. in this. Three in one, like the Holy Spirit, Father, Son, Holy okay. Spirit, Trinity. Okay. Okay. Definitely not like the Holy Spirit, that's just one, isn't it? Ben, you just finished a... Wait, am I, am I using like a spoon or something? Wait, it's in there. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> are there? Okay. Is that Turn, the right way around? That's the right way around. <sighs> Turn slightly to your right. There we go. Okay. I'm gonna miss my mouth. <laughs> you might do. Oh dear. Oh no, you're gonna need a little bit more than that. There we go. Oh. I can't even remember what's going on. What do we... <laughs> what, what do we think? <laughs> Bet you're regretting starting this challenge now. <laughs> you can have another spoonful if it helps. Can I like sh say the ones I think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready? Uh, one of them noodles. I'm gonna need a little bit more. Oh, what? A little bit more specific than specific that. Specific. Okay. Than... okay give me a oh, he's gone for a, he's gone for a double. Oh, okay, okay. I think that one's quite no, quite a. Yeah. Uh... 
Okay, okay, okay. One of the uh, noodles. Okay, okay, okay. 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 Okay, okay, okay.
<laughs> water. I don't Close know. Close coconut water. Coconut water, okay. But you know what? You didn't get it right. So <laughs> oh no. I'm going to need you to have It's just a, a spoon, swing. right? Just a, wait, a swing. Or a spoon. But I, I, yeah. Have a little, have a little spoon for the back. Oh. Also, Why? I just need to show the camera that because can you see that? That is foul. Anyway, sorry, it's not foul. <laughs> oh, oh there's a spoon in it if you want the spoon. Oh, no, okay. Yeah, please. That's the wrong way around. <laughs> Wait, okay. Oh, oh my god. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I felt like that went through someone already. <laughs> Ethan, I'm oh. so sorry. Um, you can have the packet of Oreos anyway. I feel so bad. No, that's okay. um, we're now going to head to an interview. Uh. I'm sorry. Uh. Oh, I feel bad. <laughs> You're going to have to I keep walking there. I want to lean on something. <laughs> We're now going to head to an interview. Can I take off the blindfold? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so bright. Oh, look at that. Oh, my days. <laughs> oh. We're now going to head to an interview. Tom and LD. Oh. Um, <laughs> excuse me, I'm, I'm trying to do my segment Sorry. here. <laughs> oh, that's not good. That's oh, that's not disgusting. Not. <laughs> um. That's nasty. I've still got bits of my mouth. Aaron, do you want to try some? No. Okay. We're now, we're now going to head to an interview. Tom and LD um, interviewed an astronaut. Um, so this is sick. Get your notebooks out. Um, be typing in the chat. Um, get your ears open, ready to listen. So let's head to Tom, LD and astronaut Shane. <laughs> oh, oh, that's disgusting. Shane, thank you so much for being on this call. Before I start, I need to ask you, how, what do I address you as? I mean, you're an astronaut, you a colonel, you've been in the forces. How can I, how do I talk to you properly and not offend you or <laughs> the United States of America? Uh, Shane is just fine. Uh, okay. but whatever you want to call me is, is fine as well. So. I feel like I should call you astronaut colonel Shane, the, the most amazing. <laughs> I can't believe that I'm in my loft during a COVID-19 pandemic and I'm interviewing an astronaut who's been to space many times. But um, you've done a lot of cool things. I'm just, I'm here on your Wikipedia page. And um, it's, you've been, you've been to space. Well, the time, it says time in space, 188 days, 23 hours, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, you've, uh, you've done, you've been on the EVAs, which is, it's the way you walk outside, right? The spacewalk. Correct, yep. For 39 hours, which is, I mean, that's remark. I just, I can't quite, I can't quite fathom it all. What's it like in space? Just like from like a generic, I mean, it's not generic at all. You've literally been to space. What's it like being up there? Uh, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. I wish every, every human could go up there and check it out because it is so incredible. It's such a unique environment, of course, to, to work and live and, Sometimes go outside, like you mentioned. Uh, that's pretty crazy, crazy event that we do every now and then. Uh, but just living on the International Space Station uh, with people from multiple countries and different cultures, of course, is um, really fantastic. And uh, it's really the joy of being up there is the people. Uh, we get to do some amazing science and research, of course, which benefits all of humanity. And that's pretty special to be part of something you know that big and very humbling, of course, as well. But um, just the people in general really make it or break it in any job, I think. And, and it's no different with our job, even when we're off the, off the planet on a remote. So sorry, we lost you slightly there, but I, I'm sure that happens in space too. How you, how do you communicate down to earth? Is it just, you presumably don't give it. Is it the Wi-Fi better the wi -Fi? up there? <laughs> That's funny. There is Wi-Fi, but it's only internal on the space station, right? So you're not going to like tie in anything on your Wi-Fi there. But we do have a really good phone system where you can call 
anybody, almost you know, anytime, anywhere. And uh, I'm not sure who's paying the bill, but it's not us. So. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not. But it's really fantastic. The clarity it's it's way more clear than even a cell phone call um, here on Earth. Um, and people just honestly don't believe that it's you because they're like, no, no, he's in space. It can't be him. You know, it sounds like you're right next door. And, um, so that's a really nice um, thing for morale and just to keep up with our families and friends. Um, we also get a uh, week, we'll get a video conference with our families. So that's really nice. Um, usually Sunday afternoons, uh, the way it worked out on the timelines for us was uh, I would get to do you know video chat like we're doing here, but with my family and all of them kind of up on the screens. My, my daughters were at different universities at the time. And so they would pull everybody together on one screen for me and, uh, we got to chat for about an hour, usually every Sunday afternoon uh, with video. And you obviously have to eat up there. Tell us a little about eating in space. What's it like to eat? So the food, um, everybody probably has their in their mind what space food's like. It's uh, it's 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 pretty good. It's not you know fantastic. It's not terrible. So it's kind of in the middle there. And you, I definitely find things that you like and, and that are your favorites. Um, the variety between my two flights that I've had really changed quite a bit. So my first flight, it was, I was only there a couple of weeks, so you can kind of do anything for a couple of weeks. It's like going camping or something, right? Uh, but when I was up there for six months on my last mission, then food gets pretty important and you don't want the same things every couple of days. So having variety was very important uh, as I found out. And I didn't think it was going up there, but uh, after a few months, it's very important. So <laughs> um, our menu up there is pretty nice and very um, you know, wide variety now. I was fortunate enough to fly with uh, a couple of international astronauts, like a French astronaut and a Japanese astronaut. So we got some food from those countries, which is pretty fantastic. Uh, generally have Russian meals every Friday night. We'd have a dinner down on the Russian side of the space station uh, where they would host us. You can't get McDonald's up there. <laughs> no, no, the food in the food, you know, the food's kind of weird. Like about half of it in general is dehydrated. So it's in a package um, with nothing, you know, and you put it, actually hook it up to a machine that puts water in it and then it's edible. Okay. And then the other half are kind of like uh, kind of the main courses, like the military eats these things called MREs, meals ready to eat. Um, it's those kind of pouches and we, we have a little heater that we can heat them up and just eat those. So. And I, I saw this thing that you talk about, you have to use, I'd never thought this through until I watched this interview with you. And you obviously you can't, like, so the stuff's floating around, right, in space. I'm sure there's a more scientific phrase for that. <laughs> no. You have, so obviously you have to, you said, tell us a little bit about, you have to stick the stuff to the plate. So you basically, how do you do that? Like lettuce, is salad's just flying around. How do you, I don't know, what, you can't have a knife and fork with the, but you have to make sandwiches. Tell us a bit about the, the flying space food. Yep, so we have to, you know, everything up in space floats. So you don't have a choice on some things floating or not, including food like you're talking about. So um, anytime you're getting a meal ready, it's, it's uh, very complicated, honestly. You got to think about what you're doing. You can't take the lid off of something and just let it go because it'll, you won't see it again for a while. Um, so everything pretty much has Velcro on it. So Velcro is very handy up there. Or we have duct tape. Of course, duct tape is used everywhere on everything, and even in space. So we can, if we take duct tape and kind of uh, invert it and put a long piece of duct tape on the table and then the sticky sides out, and then you kind of stick a bunch of things in line, you know, a couple, couple food items, maybe a drink, uh, maybe your spoon or fork. Um, or whatever you're, you're eating with can also go on that to hold it in place when you're not using it. Otherwise, like you said, everything just goes and floats away. That's wicked. I love that. Um, and you clean, you clean like, um, you have like a cleaning rotor. So you have to clean every week in the, in the, in the, in the International Space Station. You're talking about the space station itself, right? Yeah, you have to clean in there or is it, you don't have a cleaner come around, right? No, no, that's, that's up to us usually. Every Saturday morning, um, today we spend cleaning the space station. So we're wiping down everything. We're vacuuming the whole space station. Uh, it's just like, you know, an office building or a house. Um, it has to be cleaned. And that's kind of our normal schedule is every Saturday morning. I love that. Speaking of cleaning and like how much cleaning is going on with COVID, can you get sick on the space station? I know like you're in close quarters with people and we're all isolated right now, like avoiding people two meters apart. Do you have to do that on the space station? 
Yeah, so there's no, you don't have to be separated up there, but uh, to prevent people from getting sick, we go into a pretty heavy quarantine process, which, you know, everybody knows what quarantine means now, but we've been doing this for, for decades. Um, before you launch into space, uh, we have a minimum of 14-day quarantine requirement for the astronauts. And so that's what really withdraws them from the general public and uh, keeps them away from a lot of the germs that you normally experience, you know, out in the general public. So we've been, doing, like I said, doing that, whether we're flying from the United States or from Russia, um, the same rules apply. And again, we've been doing that for many years. This past um, launch that we just had with the crew that launched on the Space First SpaceX um, rocket to the space station a few months, about a month ago, um, they had about a 21 day um, quarantine due to COVID. So that was the only mm -hmm. difference is that we pulled them out about a week prior to normal um, and their families um, as well, which is pretty unusual. But since there was no school going on or people generally weren't working, if they could all stay in a, a quarantine situation, then they could actually see their crew members once they got down to Florida a few days before launch. So it actually worked out, you know, there's a silver lining if there is one in COVID, it helped uh, their crews and their families be able to see each other more during that quarantine period. Before LD asks some slightly more spiritual questions, um, the final one, I just thought it'd be worth asking um, about, about the SpaceX program. I watched the, the you guys, shoot, well, I tried to watch before it was delayed and then I watched again and watched it fly over the house. And you um, you obviously, I mean, you've done, you've, you've had an amazing career. You've been military, been a pilot in, a, in Apache helicopters. Um, and But more recently with, um, NASA, what's your what's your role at NASA now? You, you're no longer going into space, but I saw you in the clips. You were behind the like as they got into the Tesla cars. You were there. What's what were you doing there? Were you like the the hype man? You were telling them what was happening next. What's your role? Yeah. So during that whole quarantine period, I was pretty much or I was in charge of the astronauts, the crew. So. I was uh, the gatekeeper. I was the scheduler. I you know, told them where to go, where to be, who could talk to them, who couldn't, all that kind of stuff. And um, I, uh, part of my job now is running the quarantine facilities at the Johnson Space Center in Houston and uh, the one at Kennedy Space Center. And so once they entered quarantine, then they were really mine <laughs> to control. And um, again, who could see them and who couldn't is a big deal. Getting them integrated into the SpaceX team once we got down to Florida and then uh, the official handover honestly happens when the astronauts went in to get their suits on, their space suits on, if you saw that. As soon as they went into that room, then they were officially SpaceX, not mine anymore. Um, but you did see me after that, just following them out and making sure I was, you know, I was doing all the little stuff like pushing the button on the elevator to get them down, the, down you know, and, and just getting them, making sure they got to the cars and, uh, you know, all that was, was wired. And then once they left in the Teslas, then, you know, they were, then, then I transition honestly to more contingency operations. So if something were to bad were to happen on the launch or after the launch, then I was in charge of a team that would go rescue them, whether that was in the ocean or or wherever that was. So um, my, my my mind shifts once they left our building because then it was all about protecting for the bad day. LD, over to you. Okay, so one question that I think a lot of our young people here will have is, what was it like seeing the Earth from space for the first time? Did you notice it like while you were launching? Did you have to wait until you like were kind of floating out in the expanse? Um, what was that like? Yeah, it was, it's absolutely spectacular to answer your question simply, but um, uh, when I first got to see it, uh, I launched on the space shuttle back in 2008 on my first flight. And uh, it was about probably 30 minutes after the launch, uh, which is, it took us about eight and a half minutes to get to space on the space shuttle very fast. Um, but uh, then it takes a little while to get out of your seats and get out of your space suits. And uh, then I had a, a job up on the flight deck to open the payload bay doors, which are the big doors in the back of the space shuttle. And to do that, I had to be looking out the window. So I was very distracted <laughs> because uh, the view is you know, absolutely stunning. It's, uh, it, you know, there's a lot of us to see, even if I do, but um, it's very humbling, honestly, to look back at our planet uh, and see, you know, it is spectacular. It's beautiful. Um, but uh, we can also see the thin layer of atmosphere that's protecting all of us from living and dying. 
And so it's, that's the humbling part as well. You see this little thin thing around the earth and you're like, what's that? The first time you see it, you're like, wow, that's our atmosphere. And if that goes away, guess what? We all go away. So uh, it just gave me some perspective. I mean, it was, it was, I wouldn't say it's a God's eye view because his is even more grand than that, but it's, it's much closer than what we have here on earth, obviously to see in our beautiful planet. So it just gave me a better appreciation as well for, for earth and uh, places around the earth. I mean, I, I can look at, you know, things that maybe you wouldn't think are beautiful, like a desert or something. And they're so strikingly beautiful from that perspective. Um, you see something like the Bahamas, which everybody knows are beautiful. <laughs> they're, they're also beautiful from space, but you know, just, just random places I never would have thought of um, that are now on my bucket list <laughs> to go visit. Um, if we can ever do that again, it just gave, gave me a much better appreciation for our planet. That's so cool. And then another question, you know, at any point, were you scared during all of this or did you have any like major fears um, becoming an astronaut or going into space and how did you cope with those? Yeah, I, I've never really been scared or um, I, I, I kind of, I think, bring this from the military and, um, you know, I, I probably got some confidence through, through missions in the military, but um, we're, we're trained very well generally in the military and here at NASA. Uh, we're trained for all the the kind of the contingencies of the bad things that can happen. Um, and so, you know, I trust my, my training, first of all, and uh, then I trust my equipment, um, all the things that I'm going to be inter interacting with. If I'm not comfortable with those things, then I need more training. Uh, but once I get trained on them and I'm comfortable that they're going to do what they're supposed to do, um, there's certainly a leap of faith there, of course, that it's going to react correctly and do everything right. But um, I, I kind of just – leave it, leave it there and leave it in the hands of God to take care of us. Um, uh, on both of my missions on the launch pad, I, I was actually so comfortable. I fell asleep. And, uh, so I like telling people that I was so comfortable. I knew, you know, hundreds of people honestly were praying for me. And, um, you know, I knew I was exactly where I was supposed to be in life. Um, and God had put me in that position. Um, and so I felt very comfortable and relaxed and was just ready to go. That is so cool. Love that. And then also one thing I've noticed living in the UK now for the past uh, three years is that there's a big focus on um, mental health and well-being. And I can imagine being isolated for so long that that could be a little bit taxing on any individual, not even one that's been trained. Um, but how did you cope with that? How did you entertain yourself or make sure that it didn't take a toll on you emotionally and physically? Yeah, I mean, you know, generally I wasn't worried about myself. I was more worried about my crewmates. I was, um, I got the uh, pleasure of being the commander of the International Space Station when I was up there. So I had five other crew members that um, really I was more concerned in, in keeping my pulse on their well-being than mine. Um, I think I can just kind of motor along again, maybe my military background. Um, but, but having said that, there's things that I did all the time to make sure that I was going to be okay. And that was calling my wife every day. That was, you know, checking in on friends and family whenever I could just to keep updated with them, um, keep in touch with things going on here on planet Earth. Uh, we have, of course, we're very driven with our daily activities up there uh, with checklists. And, uh, you know, about every five minutes for 12 hours straight is scheduled for us every day. So, wow. you know, as, you, as we go through the day and you're checking things off, um, it just gave you a sense of accomplishment. So I, I tell people here with quarantine and things, if you're really stuck, just kind of make a list of things you want to do today. And as you, you, you get through those items, check them off. And it just gives you some sense of, Hey, I did something today. Um, what's the next thing. And, uh, so I hope that helps some people here on earth. Cause that's, that's the way we do it on the space station. Um, you know, we have a private place up there to go as well. And that's our sleep station or crew quarters. And that's very important. Although, cause we're normally with, you know, very close quarters with uh, five other people, you know, the space station is pretty large. Um, you know, at some point you just need to get away and you need to have private space. So it, that's a very important piece of the space station as well as once we go into our sleep stations, you can shut the doors and it's completely soundproof and private and you can, uh, you know, decompress in there. You can watch movies, you can call home, you can go to sleep, you know, those kind of things. So it's just a, uh, another important piece of living in a small, you know, small space with a bunch of people is that you got to have your own private space. Um, Every now and then we have this, well, all the time we have this module that's called the cupola that's just complete windows, 360 view of planet Earth. 
all the time. It's on the bottom of the space station. If you get in there by yourself for you know an hour, hour and a half, yeah, that is a fantastic place just to hang out and uh, watch our Earth go by. We get, go around the Earth about every 90 minutes. Um, at the speeds we're going, we're going about 32,000 kilometers per hour. So uh, moving very quickly. <laughs> so that's a cool place to no kid just hang out and watch the Earth go by. So that, that helped my sanity. Um, all of us become photographers up there. Uh, I was never one before, but that becomes everybody's hobby because you want to just start taking pictures of, of planet Earth and places either that you're familiar with or even new places. And uh, that's what everybody does is gets in that cupola module with cameras and starts going to town. And um, that's, that's a pretty cool hobby for all, all of us to have. Um, I'm a big sports fan, so I also tried to to on the weekends at least we had on a one TV channel that we were allowed to have up there. So um, I would play that kind of on a general area TV and, and uh, we just have fun and with our crewmates. And if somebody didn't know what golf was, you'd explain it. Or if somebody didn't know what rugby was, they would explain it, you know? And, and so it just helped us as a crew kind of come together. Um, let's see whether, and there's a long answer to your question, but um, <laughs> okay. the other things we would um, Friday nights, like I mentioned before, we, we all come together as a crew for dinner with the Russians and on Saturday nights, we would do the same on the U.S. side of the space station. And, uh, I kind of started this thing, the dinner and a movie on Saturday nights. So they, would, everybody would come together. We'd have dinner on Saturday nights, and then we'd show some, you know, usually some crazy space movie or something. That we were not, <laughs> was um, it like Star Wars themed or like space? No, yeah, like, and we were lucky. Actually, four or five space movies came out when we were in space. So the the movie companies would send them to us before they released it. Actually, so. That was kind of cool, like Hidden Figures and one of the Star Wars, I forget which one, and uh, Guards of the Galaxy. And, you know, some of them are goofy, but some of them are, are fun, too. And we just enjoy, you know, hanging out with each other and, and laughing. And when you watch the space movies, are y'all critiquing me like, that, that would never happen or like, that's not realistic in space? Because I feel like I would probably do that be like, mm, no. Yeah, it just depends on the person, right? So <laughs> I, I usually just, I, I just watch them for entertainment. I'm not there to pick them apart, but... Some of my colleagues um, will certainly tell you the physical, the, the physics reasons why things can't happen that way. And <laughs> I'm more just there to watch. Shane, I can't help but ask. I know um, you're you're a man with a with a faith, and um, when you're, I just th thinking about when you're saying about in the the 360 degree view point, and I'm sure there's other points where has there has 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 going to space change your faith or uh, developed or challenge your faith in, in any way? What can you say about that? Yeah, I was fortunate enough to, um, you know, I kind of grew up in a Christian family. It was, was, that was just part of my world. And, uh, but, you know, I didn't really embrace it until I got a little older um, and it became my own. Uh, and so going to space, honestly, it just, I guess, validated or verified everything that I'd, I'd grown up learning. And, uh, and so to me, it wasn't a huge change. Uh, the big change I mentioned a little bit earlier about just appreciating our planet um, and knowing it's the only one we have, uh, at least right now, to live on, that, uh, you know, we do need to appreciate it more and take care of it. And so that, it did change my perspective there a bit, but not, not my faith didn't change at all because of it. Cool. And I guess one other question I have too, you know, do you have any really like unique experiences or any favorite experiences while up in space that kind of stand out to you or you, it was just something that you got to partake in um, while up on the ISS? Yeah, we could be here all day, but I'll just try to make it one story. <laughs> or maybe like top, top one or two. And top five, top five stories. <laughs> Tom's like, we have all night. <laughs> yeah, so uh, one of them, right around Christmas time, you know, this would have been in 2016, um, I was up there and um, somebody, somebody, one of my friends on, the, on Earth said, hey, why don't you, can you read the Christmas story from the Bible, you know, on Christmas Eve from the space station? I was like, no, nah, there's no way, you know, it's against the rules, not going to happen. And uh, but then, a couple days later, I was like, you know, why don't I just ask my boss and see what he says? So I sent a little note to him, and he's like, sure, knock, knock yourself out. So I was like, what? And so what was neat was, um, so on Christmas Eve, um, I got in the cupola, that module I told you about with all the windows. Um, so the backdrop was amazing. Um, and then I got to you know, talk on the open loops, we call them, the open communication systems with all the mission control centers around the world. So the one in in Europe, Japan, Russia, and two in the United States. And I got to share and read from loop two, the Christmas story, um, over those open loops. So 
um, again, that was something that's never been done and never really thought it could be done, but uh, God had a plan. <laughs> I love so that. that was pretty, pretty special, honestly, to do that, um, and especially in that environment. So I was very happy to be part of that. Love that. I love that God showed up and allowed that to just easily happen. And your mind, you're like, no, nah, it won't happen. And sure enough, yeah. easy, easy yeah. open doors for you. Love He's them. in control, apparently, not yeah. us. <laughs> he had bigger plans. <laughs> Another reminder. Yes. Yeah. Shane, before we before we go, what what could you tell us about leadership? I mean, you've had some experience in some serious high ranking positions of leadership, even from when you were the captain of your baseball team. You know, all the way through your life, you've you've had um, you've been you've been a, a a leader. What could you say to some young people watching it about leadership and and lessons they could learn in leadership, all the way from space? Yeah, you know, for me, um, success, any success I've had has been not because of me, but because of the team I've been a part of. So it's all about the people um, in my mind. So you've got to, as a leader, and no matter if you have two people under, under, you know, under your command or 100, um, you've got to know them. you got to know what makes them tick. You can't treat them all the same because they respond differently to um, leadership techniques. So you really got to get to know them. you got to invest in them. Um, or things that I really do is invest in my people. Um, and, if, and by doing that, they then trust you. I mean, that's where this trust comes from. And in the military, you're, you're asking, you know, your subordinates to potentially put their lives on the line for you. So that's even a different level um, than anything that I'm doing now. Um, but it's, you know, that's where I really learned, like, you've got to invest in your people. Uh, you you got to really make them, empower them as well. So don't be micromanaging, you know, give them a task, let them do it on their own. It may not be the way you want to do it, um, but if it gets the job done, that's good enough. And it, and it empowers them and it gives them some confidence that maybe they wouldn't otherwise have. So um, taking care of your people is a big deal um, with any group that I get to, to uh, command or, or be in charge of. So it seemed to do me pretty well so far. Um, and also keeps you pretty humble, I think, um, by doing that, even though you might be the leader, doesn't mean you know everything and, and, and you know, be honest with people. Make sure that, uh, you know, you tell them, hey, I don't know everything. I'm going to learn this from you. You know, you're the expert in this. And uh, that really empowers them as well and gives them a lot more confidence. LD, anything else you want to ask? No. Um, well, I'm in the UK and I miss Tex-Mex a lot. What food did you miss the most while up in space? I actually, a Tex-Mex place did open down the street, Texan owned, oh. but... I have queso now, so I will I will make it. But I'm just curious, what was your food um, of choice that you missed the most? Yeah, it's yeah you know, anything honestly that was crunchy is what we missed. So all of our food was just kind of mushy, you know. It is very soft. So anything like a chip or even lettuce, anything that was crunchy like that was what I really missed um, because we just didn't have it on the space station. Every now and then we would get these care packages sent up by our families um, and others that had. You know, sometimes some crackers or something, and we'd all be fighting over those or, um, you know, just things that we normally wouldn't get up there. Fresh fruit, we didn't get very often. We would get them every couple of months or so. A little bag of fruit would show up on a, on a visiting spacecraft. But um, besides that, those are the things I think I really missed. Um, yeah, the meal I wanted when I got back home was pizza. I don't know why, but uh, it was just something that I craved. And it, it took me a couple of days to really want to eat, believe it or not. So you're your body is changing rapidly when you get back home from space or for being gone that long. And sometimes um, you just don't want to eat for a couple of days. And that was the case for me, unfortunately. But uh, when I could eat, I got a nice pizza. Well, Shane, it's an, it's been an honor and a privilege to chat with you. Thank you so much for your time. And um, what an amazing opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. And it was great to chat with you all. Astronaut Shane, LD, Tom, thank you for jumping on that Zoom and for sharing such wisdom with us. I'm sure you all made so many notes, I know I did. Um, we want to take a chance now just to pray and to invite the Spirit to come and work in our lives and to speak to us all. So um, why don't you bow your heads, get in a comfortable position, ready to receive. Um, Ethan, do you want to pray? Sure. I thank you, Father, for the, all, all the opportunities that we get to just glorify you, worship you. I pray that we take those chances to stand up for our faith amongst who, who we are, wherever we are. That we see that whenever we are doing something, we're never alone in doing it. That as long as we remain faithful and that we 
you, but I trust in you. You're always there beside us. That even when um, we may be somewhere in space, we aren't alone. We are there. Your presence is with us. And so we should feel the confidence and the importance of just putting you first, Lord, in everything that we do. We thank you that your spirit is always with us, giving us the strength and the wisdom to continue serving you and loving the people around us. Thank you. As Ethan was praying, I got a sense um, that some of you, as some of you were watching that um, interview, you were thinking, like, you want to be a leader. Like, I want to lead a team. I want to um, like, inspire people. I want to do all of that. Um, and I just, I just want to pray for um, whoever it may be. It might just be one of you. It might be a group of you that feel that kind of leadership calling on your life. And I, I just want to pray that you can remain humble in your calling and remember to keep God first and that actually God leads us so that we can lead other people. Um, so, it's a very loud helicopter, but we'll keep going. Um, so if you do think that is you, you can either write it in the chat or just um, receive this prayer now. Father, I thank you for your children. I thank you for the gift of leadership and I thank you, God, that, um, that no one's too young to lead, no one's too old to lead. God, I pray that we remember um, that whenever we are leading, we can remember to keep you at the centre and remember to follow your will, follow your word, so that we can lead other people as you would have us lead them. HB, I just want to encourage you as well. Um, follow us on Instagram and um, subscribe to us on YouTube. We don't say that so it's like uh, to get our numbers up, but we say that to remain in community. Our DMs on Instagram are always open. So if you want prayer for something, if you feel like you have a word for someone else or for any of us, then just drop us an email, drop us a DM, comment on the YouTube channels, because this is where we can find community. It's not just like, we're not just being separated by being offline, but actually we can, we can find community online. And that's the most amazing thing is that God is abound by things like that. So I really encourage you to share this with your friends, not just those that you want to chirp, or not just those that you fancy, but actually bless your friends by um, sharing with them this video. Because actually, um, they might hear, they might hear something in what Shane is saying and think, oh wow, that that's for me, or I think God's speaking to me in this way or that way. So HDB Youth, I thank you so much for joining us for this week. Um, why don't you join us next week for our final um, live um, from Tom's Garden. And we just want to encourage you as well. Sign up, Focus Alive online. Amazing. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. On the 25th of July, Saturday 25th of July, we can't meet in person for Focus this year, but we have got an incredible, um, incredible day planned. We've got Mike Pilavachi, we've got FIFA tournaments online, we've got worship. It's going to be amazing. Are you going? I am. You just make, gotta make sure you guys sign up. You guys get a free wristband as well in, your, in the package when you guys sign up. So If you sign up before the 17th of July, you actually get a package in the post and you get a wristband. It's going to be amazing. I'm going to get one. <laughs> Ethan's going to get one. It's going to be great. So make sure you sign up. You can um, go to hdb.org forward slash youth online and you can find it all, all of the information there. So HDB, we hope you have a fantastic week and we'll see you next week. Bye guys. Like what do I even type, do I even reply What is that I see, is it a necessity Are you trying to hurt me, I just leave you on scene But ooh, you're trying, trying, trying You're trying to get me down, so I say We're on cloud now, looking on the bright side Living our lives, trying to have a good Make you pay.
trying to please the crowd I just can't work it out What's your motivation? Did you have some complications? Getting out pent up frustrations Was that your obligation? But